All right, it is Chinese kit time again. I love my Chinese kits. So, I don't remember what this one is. Um, let's, let's take a look at the parts and try to figure out what it does. So, put it out onto a tray. Nice. Uh, it says uh, a bunch of Chinese things. So, uh, 13032, something about two somethings, and there's an NE555, so what could go wrong? Oh, I know what this is. So, uh, zoom out a bit. So it has a speaker, so it makes noise, and it's magnetic, so all of the little parts stick to it. I always find that annoying. All right, so it's got lots of switches, lots of these push-button switches. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight switches. And a PC board to mount those eight switches. And I believe it's an organ. Though so you push the buttons and it makes different sounds. So there must be a 555 to make the sound. And then when you push the um, buttons, it inserts a different um, resistor into the circuit and makes a different tone. So I am anticipating it sounding just terrible. <laughs> it's not going to be intonated very well. Uh, my musical ears are going to hurt, I'm sure. Uh, let's see what kind of information we've got here. Oh, here we go. Schematic. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can straighten this out a bit so that you can read it. Yeah, let's zoom in. I think, oops, sorry for the camera there. I'm sure you can get a hold of it here. So here's the, I uh, hope you can see that. It's kind of a fine print. Um, 555 here, out to a speaker. It's uh, capacitively coupled. Looks like it's three to nine volts input. And then a whole bunch of different resistors that get switched in depending on which button you press. And it is not polyphonic. It'll be monophonic, and which means it only plays one note at a time. And uh, it has keycaps for the uh, switches, so that's that's pretty cool. So, uh, oh, other side. Here's all the parts. Uh, there's a PC board. There's an 8-pin IC uh, socket, I think, and then the NE555. Uh, there's a KF31. Hmm, I don't know what that is. Anyway, some uh, 104 capacitors and 1K resistors. A uh, bunch of fun stuff. 2K, 10K, and 5 centimeter. 5 cm. I don't know 5 cm is. Anyway. Oh, and a note to tell us that it was packed in 04 of 2019. Jager Unhop. All right, let's build. Uh, let me rearrange the camera here and I'll try to get the, the build online here. All right, we'll see how this goes. Uh, let me turn on my soldering iron. Get some solder out. And no instructions, but we don't need instructions, do we? I think what we'll do is we'll put all the switches on. bent pin. Oh my god, there's a bent pin. These switches aren't staying on the board very well. There's some bent pins and stuff. So I'll put them on one at a time. And these two are holding. Yeah, PC board is interesting. It has a solder mask. It has 
bare copper though and it is only one sided so it's uh, not the cheapest PC board it's actually pretty good quality for a single sided board so a lot of times you'll see them made out of kind of a phenolic uh, kind of a, a wood wood and paper uh, type of um, construction in there quite brittle but this one seems like actually FR4 material or something like that, at least some type of fiberglass. Let me bend these pins so they don't, they don't fall out. Oh, they are falling out. Oh, there we go. In case you're wondering, I'm using a Kester 44 resin core solder. It's a uh, SN60 alloy core 66, a QQS571. I'm pretty sure you can still buy this. I don't, I don't think I bought this too long ago. Um, actual lead solder. I like Kester solder, my favorite. So, there we go. Oh, you can see the uh, writing here Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Now we can sing a song. All right, uh, the busy board is marked, so 2K, 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 1K, 10K. And there's a 1K here. Bunch of 104.1.01 points. Is that point zero one or point one? I think it's a point one. 47 microfarad and our 555. All right, let's find some. Here are some resistors. They look like a red, black, black. Sounds like 2K to me. Sounds like 2K to me. Red, black, black, red. So they're high precision, I guess. One percenters. So try to keep it in tune, I guess. None of this five percent rubbish. Still have reasonable vision. I'm 64, and uh, there's this great invention that I think for uh, glasses. I wear glasses and uh, progressive lenses, which have variable diopters depending on if you're looking through the top of the la lens or the bottom of the lens. It changes power from top to bottom so if you look at something close you're looking at the bottom part of the lens and something far away the top part of the lens and my wife never quite got used to them but I find them amazing I have very good vision with glasses on terrible vision without glasses um, this is kind of fun. 
I've got a, uh, can you read that? Uh, let me put it up on the stand here. So you can see it, there we go. I've had this thing forever. This is a, uh, a banana, banana jack lead tester, or leaded component tester. You stick it in the um, thing here, and it's got a magnet in it, so the magnet holds the part in there and it's got little contacts probably silver bladed or something I don't know the rhodium or something there still very shiny and it just sucks it in there because the leads are magnetic and or you know steel and uh, we know that we've got a 10k uh, 10k resistor and it's very handy you don't have to have you know leads in your hands and drop things and Anyway, I've had the thing forever and love it. I, I really haven't ever seen another one. I don't know where I got it. Might have been part of a uh, Tektronics curve tracer. I had one of those once. I was driving down the road here in Sunnyvale, California, and I saw a sign that's a garage sale. And I thought, well, that's odd, because I'm in the middle of Silicon Valley, and there's only companies. There's no, there's no homes around the area. And uh, so I stopped over, and there was a, a roll-up garage, you know, a roll-up uh, business rental place. And they were just selling things out of the roll-up, and... Um, it was a bunch of, it was like old division of Intel, and somebody was just told to get rid of everything, throw everything away. So they had a, the guy, I guess, didn't want to throw things away, so we, they probably told him, go ahead and sell it. If you sell it, you can have it, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, he uh, sold off the contents of this thing, and it was like filing cabinets and desks and stuff. Nothing I was really interested in, but there was a Tektronix curve tracer. I don't remember the number on those things, 541 or something. It was the solid state one. It was the, the nice, real solid state one, and gave him 75 bucks for it. And uh, it was fun. I really didn't have any use for it at home at the time. Oh, I plugged up one of the holes. What did I just do? I did. I put solder in one of the holes. Oops. Um, anyway, I gave him 75 bucks for it, and played with it for a while and then um, decided to sell it and contacted Tucker Electronics in uh, where are they Texas Tucker they have all kinds of test equipment and I called them up and they also sold ham radio stuff so I told them what I had what I wanted to sell they said yeah we want it and uh, I think they were gonna give me fifteen hundred dollars for it which was a lot of money back then and I said, tell you what I'm going to do. I said, I want a new ham radio. I wanted a, I think it was an ICOM HT. And I wanted everything. I wanted every single battery, every single component, every single accessory they had for that thing. And I said, uh, that's what I want. I'll trade you. <laughs> and they go, sold. So I got, send in my curve tracer and got a, Really, really nice ham radio for the deal. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of this little blob of solder I put on there. There we You know, in the old days, I always cleaned my soldering iron with a sponge and water. And uh, you can see, you know, my solder station has a sponge built in, and I've got the official sponge here, but it's dry. Because I use these things now, these uh, 
spun copper brass shaving things. This one's a Heiko Heiko 9, no, 599B. And you just jam it in there and you're clean. And that, and no water, no muss. Actually, having water in here costs some of my tools to rust too. So, anyway, I do recommend those things. All right, my camera cut out. I don't know why, but it decided to stop recording. But anyway, it didn't miss much. Um, I did uh, get the speaker attached, and we now have uh, some power applied, 5 volts applied to this thing. And we should be able to push some buttons. And none of these buttons work. <laughs> we got three notes. Oh. So, <laughs> uh, let's figure out why these don't work. It's a series of resistors. There's not much to go wrong here. So, uh, let me dig into that and see. There's probably a solder joint or a bad resistor or something. I don't know. Let me dig into it. Okay, I was just saying how nice the PC board was, but there seemed to be some kind of hairline fracture between these two traces here. And I had to put a little jumper. A little jumper there. Go over the break in the trace. At least that's what I think it is. Uh, let me turn it around here so I can read the do re me stuff. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Can you see that? Uh, okay. Do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, di, do. Oh God. That is not a scale. It does make noise though. Sounds like Russian uh, dirge. <laughs> Can't even play Christmas music. Wow. So. <laughs> Oh well, it's entertainment value, I guess. Something to do. It keeps you off the street. Something to solder. Uh, 555. Nice, my nice switches. Crappy speaker. Uh, I don't know. Can I recommend it? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Unless you just have some kid that wants to annoy you. Makes this terrible sounds all day long. Sounds like Mario, or Ocarina. Maybe that's it, Ocarina of Time. Oh well. Uh, that's what it is, folks. Uh, not recommended. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for it. I don't think it was the cheapest thing. Maybe it was like uh, $6 or something, I don't remember. Maybe it was less. Oh well, have fun. <laughs>